Isn't it a pleasure to listen to the melodic sounds of stepper motors while they're creating a 3D print? Well, not really. But why do we use them then? I mean a brush DC motor rotates as well and is way quieter. So in this video, in order to find an answer to that question, I will show you how a modern stepper motor works and how easy it is to control one with and without a microcontroller. Let's get started. First off, let's inspect the insides of the stepper motor that I salvaged from an old 3D printer. By simply unscrewing the four screws on the back and applying a bit of force, I removed the back which revealed a rather commonly known structure of a so-called hybrid synchronous stepper motor. There also exist permanent magnets types and variable reluctance types, but since the hybrid ones have more advantages and are more common nowadays, let's focus on those. Its removable rotor consists of four permanent magnets with alternating polarity. One north and south pole together form a pole shoe which has exactly 50 teeth per sprocket. But the teeth of the sprockets of one pole shoe are not aligned perfectly. They have an offset, which means that if we look at the front, we can see north, south, north, south and so on magnetized teeth. The stator of the stepper motor also possesses such teeth but they are not magnetized yet. In order to do that, the motor consists of 8 physically separated coils. But since we only have 4 wires to work with, there are basically just 2 coils which are spread out. With the help of a multimeter, I asserted that red with blue and black with green form a coil. And by powering those with a lab bench power supply, it was pretty easy to declare which coil pair is positioned where inside the motor. And while the opposing coils will create the same magnetic polarity, the other two will create the reverse magnetic polarity. Now with those information in mind, let's try to experiment and find out how this motor works. Firstly, I connect black to VCC and green to ground, which creates a south pole at 0 degrees. This attracts the north polarized teeth, which now align with the south pole. Next, blue connects to VCC and red to ground. Now we have a north pole at 45 degrees, which the south polarized teeth will follow. Then we connect green to VCC and black to ground. This time we have the south pole at 90 degrees. Again the reverse polarized teeth follow and we can move on to the last step by hooking up red to VCC and blue to ground to create a north pole at 135 degrees, which the teeth will once again follow. With those four steps, one tooth moved exactly to the location of the next tooth. And if we multiply the 50 teeth by four steps, we get a total of 200 steps per rotation. Which actually makes sense, since the type label gives us a step angle of 1.8 degrees. That is 360 degrees per rotation divided by the 200 steps. But because turning on each coil mechanically is kind of impractical, we need a driver. For that, I created a rather crude but functional one, which consists of 4N channel and 4P channel MOSFETs to form two H bridges, and an Arduino to control the 4 gate pairs. An H bridge can basically let current flow in either direction through the coil by turning on either the top left and the bottom right MOSFETs or the top right and bottom left MOSFETs. After connecting the motor and creating a bit of simple codes, the four steps were repeated over and over again which makes the rotor spin. Perfect! And because I can exactly control how many steps the rotor should perform, the stepper motor is suitable for positioning applications, like 3D printers. Another advantage is that when current flows through the coils in only one way, the rotor does not spin, but it keeps its position persistent, with a so-called holding torque, which is sometimes given on the type label along with the required coil current. But let's go back to my driver circuits. What I used here is so called wave driving, in which only one coil is active. There also exists full step driving, in which both coils are active and thus create a higher torque. Next is half step driving, which combines all the previous driving states and thus increases the resolution from 200 steps to 400 steps per rotation. 
This madness then continues to 1 quarter steps, 1 eighth steps, 1 sixteenth steps and so on, which is also known as micro stepping. But in order to implement that, we don't want to use a constant voltage applied to our coils, like I did it with my driver. Instead we need a constant current, which we can vary in its strength to create the different steps. An easy solution to this problem is this A4988 microstepping IC, which is basically a more advanced H bridge. I connected the setup pins like it's shown in this schematic, hooked up the MS pins up to 5V in order to enter the 1 16th step modes, connected my 12V power source and finally the motor, which does nothing yet. What is missing is a circuit that creates a variable frequency square wave like this 555 timer circuit. By connecting the outputs to the step pin, the motor rotates one step when other the square wave changes from low to high. And if we take a look at the voltage and current of one coil, we can see that the chopped up voltage creates a variable constant current which ultimately forms a sinusoidal shape. At this point everything works fine and the advantages of microstepping are quite obvious. Not only is the movement of the rotation much smoother, but the loudness of the motor also decreased drastically. Of course you could also use an Arduino to control the A4988 driver IC, but for now you already learned quite a bit about stepper motors. I hope you liked this video. As always don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.